So, a bit of the Defender 90 update. As you can see now, we now have the windscreen fitted. Hurrah! What a carry-on that was. If you saw in a video that there was going to take two weeks to come here to fit the window, well yesterday out of the blue I got a call and they said, oh we've got a, an appointment, we've got a window of opportunity to come and put your glass in. A window of opportunity, say, it must be an in-joke. Anyway, they came down, two guys, one was sort of a little bit younger than me and the other guy was an old fellow with a walking stick. Didn't fill me full of confidence. Anyway, um, I already had the window with the rubber on the table, ready for them to put a cord in. Go like this, bonk, string round, pull it through, bye. No. And I said to them, when they put the little suckers on, they go to the thing, go to the window like this, and I said, are you going to put any lube on that? They said, no, 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 you don't need lube. I says, don't go in dry, boys. Don't, don't do it dry. It's going to end in tears. So they said, no, 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 we're professionals. It was all in French, by the way, so <laughs> it was kind of funny. Anyway, they buggered about for an hour and a half. You know, when I've done them, it's like 10, 15 minutes and put plenty of lube on and then they just pop in. And what had happened was this top corner here, they'd got the window slightly like this. Because, it, because the rubber was dry and there was nowhere for it to move, they had a hell of a time. They were pulling the rubber back and trying to squirt some squirty lube in there. And oh, and I kept saying to him, take it out and lube it and put it back in again, easy. No, 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 we're professionals. <laughs> well, it didn't look like it. I'm not using them again, that's for sure. Anyway, but the window's in. That's, that's the thing. Oh, and by the way, you know how much they charged? 175 Canadian dollars to put a window in. Bloody hell. That was expensive. Phone went off. It was the owner, ironically. Anyway, look, so what I was getting at is today, I'm going to fit the headliner. Now, we recover these ourselves. We can't go, well, we can get the vinyl from UK, but my God, it was expensive. So we get this stuff that's available in uh, North America, and it's nice and stretchy, and it's got a grey finish to it, like a fabric-y finish. It's good, but it could be better, but when it comes to doing things like these mouldings here, and especially like, round here, I can't hold it up, but my arms are not big enough. As you can see, it fits beautifully. See, quality. <laughs> so I'm gonna change the, um, the light and put the light in that we did the other day. And then it's just a matter of trimming up. So I'm gonna work with my friend Jim on Friday. It's Tuesday now. Um, we're going to do the carpet, so I'll bring the carpet in to get warmed up and uh, then we're going to trip it out. Now, um, the owner just said that he didn't want rear seats fitting, he just wants front seats fitting. Excellent, because then you can put, do those things later. So, and uh, we've come to a solution for doing the wheels as well, because they wanted um, traditional Land Rover wheels. No spokes or, you know, these bloody you know, wiry type things. So I've sort of bit the bullet and we're going to put spacers on and just bring them out by an inch, put spacers on, then we can fit genuine Land Rover wheels and that is going to look really nice. You know, it's going to look nice. Um, I'm not a great lover of spacers <laughs> just for the looks, but in this instance we can put um, genuine Land Rover mag wheels onto a 200 TDI. Uh, it, it'll work, it'll work well. because. This isn't going to be used as a roughy toughy off-road vehicle. Uh, it's going to be a nice vehicle to admire and drive around and cruise around. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So I think the first job today is order up some parts on the list because I've been talking to the owner and we've decided to put the LED lights in, which are the traditional coloured lights. So that means then I can put I can bring the wires out through the wing for the side lights, so I'm going to put like Disco 2 uh, orange side lights on. I, I didn't know whether we were going to do smoke glass or smoke finish or not. And then we can decide what to do with the front because um, it's, it's touch and go whether we put the absolute traditional finish on 
or do something, you know, outrageous with the front. Well, not outrageous, but tastefully outrageous. I'm sort of an old, old-fashioned guy, and I like the old plastic, black plastic finish. But, well, it's not my car. But I do like the bonnet, though. I really do like the bonnet. That, that looks really nice. So, um, yeah. So that's an update, and we'll finish. It. We'll we'll do a little few updates as we go along. When it comes to fitting the centre or the roof lining for the back, it becomes a bit a bit difficult because you've got to fall force this into like a V to get it in and you've got also to make sure that all your wires are not showing that's in your guttering get those out of the way and then you've got to get it pushed back and it's a it's a really bit tricky there we go yeah it's got to fit on top of these pieces here in the corner. Now, first one I ever do. Oh, it's blinded. You like to be blinded, you say? The first one I try to put in is the middle one at the back, just to hold it up whilst you're, you're playing around. But I don't actually put them all in uh, at once, if you see what I mean. I just um, tap them loose, so you've got something to to move the roof line around. But it will, you know, it will pull pull up. It, it's no big deal, but it just looks a bit uh, it just looks a bit bad. So I'm going to fit fit these pins in this middle row here, uh, and like again, we're just going to line them up and tap them in. Now, <clears throat> a little tip is when you're, um, when you're working with your hammer, wash off the face with, a, with some acetone or something like that. Get all the grease off, because when you, you don't want to have all black marks all over your roof. So I'm going to get on with that now. I'm going to give you a couple of hot tips on fitting this back panel. The roof lining is very easy. The holes are good. You know, they're, they're, they'll take a bit of hammering, but these don't, all right? Just be careful when you're hammering these clips in, because what you can happen is you can actually dent that panel. There's no uh, strength to it at all. I've seen lots of people hammering bloody thing clips in, and especially on these ends here, this is a little bit stronger. But you can actually put a buckle and you don't want that in your nice paint. So what I do, because these aren't really structural, because your, your, your uh, grab rail handles, your grab handles, are going to hold it on anyway. And also it sits sort of up there out of the way. What I do, oh, <laughs> I try to juggle with them, I get a knife and I cut some of the teeth down. And the reason for that is some of these are so tight, you know, they're not very flexible at all. So when you bang them in, you can, uh, you can actually damage the panel. So I've trimmed that down a bit. You know, you just want to make them, just make them, make them sure that they're going to go in. You don't want them to drop out. Now, what have I done with the panel? Oh, really? There we go. I'm going to put one up here. There we go. Yeah, we've got to find out where I'm going. I'm going to put my hand at the other side. And that's all it gets. You get no more. Same at this side here. Feel where the hole is. That's all it's going to get. 
So I'm going to build this this up. Uh, I haven't got. I've run out of clips for some strange reason. I thought I had about you know, 20, 30 of them. I haven't got any left. So I've left those here, so they're easier access. I'm going to put the handles on, and then I'm going to tell you something about uh, roof linings again. Stick around. Jim and I recovered this uh, roof lining last year, and uh, it didn't come out too bad. It was quite nice. But okay, again, this is a 30 odd year old lining and it was a little bit, well, already bored a bit and there wasn't much we could do with it. But it worked and it was a lot more presentable than the uh, sagging Bedouin tent type of thing. Now there's a couple of things you have to know. If you're going to recover your headlining, like we did, um, just take your time and just do a little bit at a time. One day we'll, we'll do a headlining. But what I was going to mention to you is that um, when you're poking the holes through, like never, never drill this stuff. Use a, a soldering iron or a hot iron or a hot nail and poke the holes. Because you can see them from the other side where they should be. Um, and then there'll be, you'll make a nice hole to put your, your uh, rivets through. <clears throat> But one of the things I'm getting at, if you decide to think, oh hell, I'm going to buy myself a brand new Land Rover headlining. And this, this is especially for a 110. The newer 110 headlinings are slightly different on the line of uh, clips that go across here. They're not in the same place. The bar has moved a little bit, so what you have to do is observe it very carefully, offer it up, and I can't remember which side there is, but there's a square rib in here, like there's a square rib running this way. I think what we had to do was make an angle out of aluminium and then pop rivet it to the side so we had like an L shape, so the L, the vertical was on the back of it and then it came forward so then we could drill the holes you have to be super careful not to drill through the roof i had one lad do it once i was very very disappointed but uh, it's so easy to do now sometimes again if you're putting a second hand liner in sometimes these pins don't line up so then you have to drill it but again be super super critical super careful and maybe it's an idea on a drill uh, bit or or a bit or your drill is to put some tape around as a depth don't go flying through both uh, bits of roof and come out at the top if you understand what I'm trying to say but all in all it looks nice um, got to clean it up but that's just a word of warning if you're going to put a newer headline in like a I think there are Puma ones they don't really fit the, the older 110 ones so just be careful all right so that's it so now the next job Oh, I don't know what the next job is. We'll find something to do. Talk to you later. Bye.